faster than a speeding bullet. I ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid. More powerful than a locomotive. An idea is like a virus. Resilient. Highly contagious. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Hey guys, Jared Moon here and welcome to the Better Humanology podcast. This week we have Evan Brand. Evan is an author, podcast host, and Louisville, Kentucky-based board certified holistic nutritionist, certified functional medicine practitioner, and nutritional therapist. Uh, Super cool guy, a lot of knowledge coming out of Evan. I know I learned a lot, a lot about testing, a lot of some common problems that uh, you may be encountering to be honest, and you might want to listen to this episode to, uh, you know, learn different ways you can heal your gut or go about testing or working with professional to work on some of these issues. Either way, I learned a lot and I'm excited for you guys to dive in as well. So here is Evan. All right, Evan, welcome to the Better Humanology podcast, man. I'm super, ha- super pumped to have you here. Jared, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. Right? We, we scheduled this a while back, but I really, really want to dive into a lot of different topics today, talk about your background, but everyone listening knows before we can do that, we have to give them some challenges and some recommendations. So are you up for it? I'm up for it. All right. How about a fitness challenge for everybody listening? Oh, man. Uh, I would say hike five miles. I just moved to my new house, so hopefully the recording's not too echoey, but uh, I'm, I'm surrounded by woods. We've got maybe... 80 to 100 acres of pretty hilly terrain, and when the baby's taking a nap, I throw on the muck boots and just go playing in the creeks and finding new waterfalls and stuff, and that's a different type of fitness. Like, I don't care how much exercise you do in the gym and how awesome you are in your CrossFit box. When you're climbing up rocks and hills and slipping into creeks and trying to pull yourself up using a tree because the the hillside is muddy, like, that's intense. So go for a five-mile hike in the woods and the more steep and the more terrain you can handle, go for it. I love that one, man. Yeah, so we we talked a little bit before the podcast, but that's a big reason why I moved to Asheville, uh, North Carolina, was to get a little bit more of what you're talking about. I was like super landlocked in this concrete jungle in Dallas, Texas for a lot of years, and I got out here, you know, and that's my favorite thing to do now is, you know, go out, uh, find a waterfall, go hiking in the woods, all that stuff, and it is definitely the epitome of functional fitness, truly. Oh, yeah. You're a good part of the country. I love going to the Smoky Mountains, take the wife and the baby down there. It's a great part of the country for sure. And how old is your, your baby? Girl or uh, she's Yeah, she's a little girl. Uh, she just turned 20 months, so she'll be two this summer. Okay, awesome, man. How do you like being a dad? Is this number one? Oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. People, you know, people, and maybe this is just like a selfish thing when you're at a certain phase of maturity in your life, but people kind of talk down. And at least when I lived in Austin, Texas, people like made fun of me being engaged and married in my early twenties. But it's like, you have no idea what you're missing out on. Raising a family is the greatest thing in the world. So I'm a huge, huge proponent. If you've got the lifestyle that allows you like myself to be able to be home and my wife staying home too. I mean, we've got a really cool, really cool blessed life where we get to spend so much time with her. So yeah, I love it. Yeah, man. Those I don't know what those people were talking about. I got married when I was 22 years old, and uh, yeah, I have three kids, or about to have three kids, one on the way oh, man. in like uh, a month. So yeah, Congrats. thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, so how about a uh, mental toughness challenge? Uh, I mean, can I say the same answer over? I mean, I came yeah. <laughs> back to the house after that hike, and I told my wife, I was like, my God, that was intense. I got to the point where I was so tired in those muck boots. Muck boots, for people who live in concrete jungles, might not know what muck boots are, but they're these big rubber neoprene waterproof boots that come up to your knees, and you can you know, hike through uh, a creek and, and not get wet. Those things get heavy. I mean, that was a mental toughness challenge. I was in the middle of the woods and I just saw a few deer. So that was motivating. And then I was like, oh my God, mentally I was exhausted. I'm like, how am I going to get up this hill? I'm in the middle of the woods. I've got to get back to work. What am I going to do? And it it took a lot of mental push for me to climb up that hill. I was literally grabbing on to trees, pulling myself up the hill because it was so steep. So mentally, physically, I mean, that was just a very recent adventure that, that I would say people should try. Awesome, dude. Love it. Yeah. And sometimes the fitness and mental toughness challenges are one and the same. So that's perfectly cool. All right. And how about a book recommendation? This could be something you read recently or maybe a book that's had a big impact on your life. 
Oh, easy. Uh, that would be Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield or the – I always mix it up. Is it The War of Art? I think it's The War of Art. Sometimes I want to say The Art of War, but I believe it's The War of Art and then Do the Work. Those are both Stephen Pressfield books. Basically, these are books that tell you, hey – Stop making excuses. If you just do the work, you're going to achieve whatever goal you want. And that was foundational for me because I had so many ideas spinning in my head. Like I started my own podcast six years ago back in 2012 and didn't know what it would become like it is today. But along that journey, that do the workbook, it was really just like, hey, look, shut up and put your nose down and get working. And if you do that, you're likely going to be successful. So for me, you know, I don't have a TV, I don't have cable, I don't have Netflix, I don't watch any TV, barely ever see movies. Of course, as you know, when you're a dad, it's like, how are you going to, you got to hire a babysitter or something to, to go to the movies. But anyhow, I'm just so focused. It, it's work and play, work and play. And for me, that's kind of what that book encouraged you to, to do is just to focus and to really tune out the noise. And if you've got that negative self-talk in your head, the book will kind of help you walk through that, like that monkey in your brain that's telling you that you're worthless or you're not good enough. It's basically like, hey, look, we all have that voice in our head. Don't worry about it. Just keep pushing forward. I love that recommendation. Both phenomenal books, man. I'm getting more excited the more we dive into this conversation because I feel like you and I are a lot alike. Uh, yeah, no no cable here. Cut all that stuff out when I started my business uh, back in the day and just got extremely focused because it was a side hustle for me for a long time while I was active duty military. Uh, and I knew the only way it was going to become a business was if I cut out any and every activity that wasn't focused on doing that uh, part-time. And now it's full-time. It just that kind of, that ha habit has just kind of stayed, you know, and, and that's, it's, uh, co I'm complete agreement with you and both great book, book recommendations. Yeah. And it doesn't mean don't have fun, right. right? It just means stay focused and go, 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 go and stop listening or worrying about everyone else. Like I deactivated my Facebook page, my personal one back in 2009. That was, that was well, almost 10 years ago now, believe it or not, nine years ago, that was the best thing I ever did. Now, Facebook, they changed their policy. So from my business page, my public figure, Evan Brand page, they changed it a few years ago and they forced me to reactivate my personal page because you had to have it linked up to the business page. Anyway, logistically, it was silly. But what I did is I just unfollowed everyone. So when I go, if I uh, can't fight the urge and my fingers, like everyone else's fingers, type F-A-C-E and then you end up on Facebook again, you have no mm -hmm. idea what you're doing on Facebook. I have no feed. There's nothing to read. There's nothing to get distracted in. That's awesome, dude. That's a very similar story here, too. I, I found a Google Chrome plugin called Newsfeed Eradicator. Um, and when you when you log in, because um, I use Facebook a lot for business, like we have some uh, athlete groups that, that I manage and, and help our athletes respond to questions and whatnot. But that's work. And that's the only reason I ever get on Facebook. But when I log in, it's just got a quote normally about productivity, you know, and which is pretty awesome. And so I, you can't see a feed. All you see is this quote and nothing else. And then I can click on my groups if I want to go in and manage or talk to athletes or whatever we're doing that day. That's the way to do it, man. Sounds like we're, uh, we're aligned. Sounds like we're onto something here. We are, man. So, so give me a little background on, uh, You've been podcasting, you said, for six years, which is crazy. You know, that especially it was like that's before most people even knew what a podcast was, you know. So you, you got into that. Uh, just just give me your whole background. I won't, I won't steal any of your thunder here. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I started out as a wounded warrior. I had a lot of health problems. Just the, the more that I get interviewed, the further back I the timeline keeps going. I used to say when I was in business school, when I was in college, that my health problems occurred. But then I thought, you know what? My gut wasn't normal in my teenage years either. And then I thought, well, you know what? My skin and things like that weren't normal when I was a young kid either. So the timeline keeps getting pushed further back. But I had many health problems and went to conventional doctors and got pharmaceutical drugs written for me that I never took, you know, acid blocking medications and antispasmatic drugs and other pharmaceuticals designed to help with IBS, which is a generic diagnosis diagnosis that means we have no idea what's wrong with your gut but something and we don't know how to help you besides give you these drugs and I inherently knew even at that stage that my problems weren't a deficiency of pharmaceuticals and so that's when I started studying nutritional therapy and I became what's called an NTP a nutritional therapy practitioner where basically you learn how to use food as medicine with people and you're creating certain dietary protocols to help mitigate certain health problems and then that got me like 80% of the way there to help my energy problems, my depression problems, my IBS that was all improved, but I still had some issues and uh, my weight had dropped. I lost 20 pounds without trying and 
I didn't have much weight to lose. I was always pretty low body fat, pretty lean, and uh, lost a bunch of weight and couldn't figure out what was going on. Stress was a huge factor, by the way, and I had some internal stress going on. So then I found out I had parasite infections. I had H. pylori, which is a very common bacterial infection. I see it every single week in the clinic. In fact, just before you and I got on this podcast, I was speaking with a guy who showed up with an H. pylori infection. This is a bacteria that 50% or more of people in the U.S. have, and it damages these parietal cells in your gut. These are the cells that make stomach acid. So people with indigestion and burping and bloating and gas and heartburn and things like that, a lot of times it's a bacterial infection and acid-blocking drugs like what commonly get recommended, like what got recommended to me, they'll come in and suppress the symptom, but they don't fix the root cause. So long story short, I became a functional medicine practitioner, took a lot of advanced courses on uh, biochemistry and learning about the liver and kidneys and thyroid and all of the organs that are mainly dysfunctional in the modern world because of such a bad diet and poor stress and poor sleep and all of that. So found out I had all those gut bugs, used herbal medicine to treat all those infections, and then now I'm feeling better than ever, and I just can't even believe it. I'm so grateful for the journey I've been on because for me as a practitioner, it gives me, a, uh, I guess, a more empathetic approach. I can, I can say with confidence, look, I understand, and I don't just say that as someone to – I, I don't basically make things up when I tell people I understand, I know what you're going through because I did. I went through everything. So I think it's a cool perspective because now when somebody says, oh, my God, I'm just so tired. It's like, look, I was there. Oh, my God, look, my stomach, the pain. Look, I know I was there. So um, really, really interesting, right? It's like I never thought I'd be in this position, but – you just have to go with the flow. And, and that's what I did. And every time I got pushed in this direction, like to move to Texas or to move back to Kentucky, all these little nudges of the boat, I just followed where the boat was going. And that's kind of how I got here today. Awesome, man. Awesome story. I mean, a lot pops up for me here. Now, um, I want to talk about not just your own journey, but uh, now kind of move to, I mean, you've helped a ton of people. Uh, and I'd like to know if you could paint any sort of broad picture or broad stroke here with, uh, you said like uh, I, I would, anything that might be really common that you see with people that you're helping, you know, your patients, like what are they, uh, what's a big ticket item you see a, a lot of the times? Yeah, good question. So the H. pylori is big. Like I said, that's a bacterial infection that often gets passed between spouses as well. So, you know, kissing, uh, sex, etc. you can pass bugs between each other. So it's very common that if we test the wife, you know, most of functional medicine is women because men don't like to admit that there's something wrong. <laughs> they like to just tough it out and be a tough guy. It's like, stop, that's silly. Just you're a human. You can have health problems. But you know, 80% of the practice is probably women because 20% of men are the only amount of men that fess up. Hey, I'm depressed. Hey, I have energy problems. Hey, my sex drive sucks. Hey, my sleep is affected. I've got insomnia. I've got energy problems. I've got bloating. I've got fingernail ridging, like ridges on your fingernails. If you've got lines on your fingernails that you can feel the texture of, that tells you you've got malabsorption problems. Now the question is why? Could be that bacterial infection I spoke about, but more commonly is a candida infection, which is a yeast. And there's about 20 different species of candida, but candida is a yeast that grows in the presence of sugars and refined carbohydrates. So, of course, the standard American diet is the perfect conducive diet to create a yeast overgrowth. And that's where you eat a meal and you get bloated afterwards, like you've got to pop open that top button on your pants. That's probably candida. Now, it could be other species of bacterial infections. Uh, for me, it was parasites, which sounds exotic, but it's not. I did not leave the country to get parasites. The food supply is international. Think about your pineapple that comes from Costa Rica. Think about your organic blueberries that come from Peru. Think about your peas that come from Ireland. You know, there's many, many different uh, things that are international. So even if you're not an international traveler, the food supply is international. So you can pick up these bugs from basically anywhere. Uh, so I would say parasite infections. I've tested over 2,000 people. Parasite infections affect one out of every three. Bacterial infections affect two out of every three. Candida affects pretty much like 2.9 out of every three. I mean, if I see someone that doesn't have a yeast overgrowth, which is also commonly triggered by the use of antibiotics, because when you get an ear infection or you get a, a cold and the doctor passes out antibiotics like Skittles, 
guess what? When you destroy the whole microbiome, the first thing to come back into the neighborhood is candida. So literally almost every single person I test with a urine test called organic acids testing, this measures the gases that candida produces. If I see someone without yeast, I'm like, wow, congratulations. What did you do? What's your secret? <laughs> That's awesome. And, and uh, how, how do you go about correcting, let's say, a candida issue? Because you're saying, what did you, you say, 2.9 out of... 2.9 out of three. So Basically, like I'm just everyone making up. Yeah. Like 97% <laughs> of people yeah. I test. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Well, it depends on what you're up against. Right. And this is kind of my whole philosophy behind functional medicine is that you've got to test. Don't guess. You know, there's a million podcasts and blogs and everyone's talking about this supplement and that supplement and this nutrient and turmeric and fish oil and probiotics and ketogenic this and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, if you don't have a clear order of operations and a clear action plan, then you're just you're throwing money down the drain and you're creating what I call a supplement graveyard. Many of you have it, so I know you're probably smirking here. That shelf or that cabinet full of stuff that you bought, maybe you're just not consistently using it. That's a supplement graveyard, <laughs> and and you can and you can prevent this. And how you prevent it is first you get the clinical data. So once you get the testing done, let's say you get a stool panel and a urine panel. Let's say it's just candida, which is rare, but let's say it's just candida on its own. You could probably come in for six weeks and knock that out with a combination of olive leaf, oregano oil can be helpful, caprylic acid, which can come from like an MCT oil or a coconut oil can be beneficial. There's monolaurin extract, which is a coconut oil extract. Those are all natural antifungal slash natural anti-yeast. So if you did that and you did a particular species of probiotics called Saccharomyces boulardii, that's a specific strain of beneficial bacteria that can actually kill off candida and kill the toxins that it creates. Typically, candida is going to be causing like bloating and food cravings, sugar cravings, also brain fog though. If your brain's just not working, that could also be a yeast overgrowth. But if you come in with these herbs, you do it strategically, and then you use the probiotics, you're going to be good to go. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, one thing that I, I find fascinating is and my wife and I are big believers of this, and this is obviously a, a huge part of uh, your entire practice, is just how much nutrition can can actually fix. But is there ever a point when you're like, you, you see someone and you're like, okay, you know what? We, we've taken it as far as we can. Maybe you do need some sort of medical intervention. I got 80% of the way there out of the rabbit hole I was in with my health problems with just the food as medicine piece. The final 20% was... Uh, a buddy of mine who we do a lot of content uh, together, his name is Justin. Uh, we do podcasts and, and create videos together and such. He looked at me and he goes, Evan, I saw pictures of you and you used to have a lot more muscle mass. Like you're looking very thin. What's going on? He goes, I bet you've got parasites. And I was like, ah, oh, come on, man. And it took me a few weeks to listen to him and run the stool test. But once I did, it was like, oh my God, here's the answers. I had H. pylori. I had parasites. I had bacteria. I had yeast. I was getting robbed of all my nutrition. So I didn't. it didn't matter if I was drinking a gallon of bone broth a day and eating the best uh, grass-fed, 100% organic meats and veggies. It didn't matter because my nutrition was getting stolen by these bugs. And so at a certain point, you've got to just say, okay, I've done as much as I can do lifestyle medicine wise, stress management, going to bed on time, exercising, getting off technology, decompressing, having good relationships, removing bad people from my life, stabilizing my blood sugar by not skipping meals, having to snack if I needed to, uh, making sure that I'm not spreading myself too thin. I'm saying no to obligations when I can. I'm delegating tasks to other people. Like all that's great. But at a, at a certain point, it's like, okay, now what? I've still got gut problems. I still was having gut pain. I was still having sleep problems. What the heck was going on? And it was the gut. So yeah, at a certain point, you've just got to say, okay, I've done all the food as medicine and I'm, and I'm here. Now, how do I get to the next stepping stone? That's where the diagnostics come in. Okay. And one thing I want to talk about with you is because you mentioned, uh, I, you've probably helped with this, but you also mentioned having uh, depression. And this is something that's been very uh, fascinating to me because uh, while I, I am a big believer in nutrition affecting everything, um, fixing depression through nutrition um, or, you know, anything like that, it, I think is a new topic for a lot of people who who either don't have a lot of experience with depression or uh, maybe they have a family member and they haven't experienced it yet or something like that. Uh, so can you talk about maybe the link there and kind of the, the process you went through? 
Sure. I mean, I was depressed as long as I could remember. Like I remember being a kid and just seeing other kids that were happy and bubbly. And I was like, why am I not like them? And then uh, of course that grows into your teenage years and then you get into college and then you're like, this is not, this is not right to, to, to wake up and just already feel like the day sucks, even though nothing's happened bad to me. And so, uh, part of the issue with depression, many, many cases of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, are co-associated with depression and or anxiety. And it's because serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter responsible for mood stability, much of that is manufactured in the intestines. So if you've got a bacterial overgrowth, you've got inflammation in the gut, which you can measure on a stool test. My inflammation was off the charts. That's going to stress out what's called the gut-brain axis. So we now know that there's a two-way highway a two-way communication signal between the gut and the brain. You may have heard of the gut being called the second brain, and it's true. And this is why you say, oh, I have a gut feeling. Well, how do you get a gut feeling? Well, it's because the gut is sending a signal to the brain, and the gut can make decisions faster than the brain, in fact. So when you get a gut feeling, this is a good person or this is a bad person, or uh, if you're in combat and you're like, hey, I've got a bad feeling, something's on the other side of this door, I don't know what it is, that gut feeling is sending the signal to your brain. And it's happening so fast you can't even believe it. It's milliseconds. And when you have gut infections, that can disturb this gut-brain axis. Therefore, depression, anxiety, fatigue, mood swings, irritability, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, manic depression, road rage, all these things can occur. Now, just to get a little geeky for a second, then I'll kind of zoom out. Uh, there is multiple studies showing that a specific type of bacterial overgrowth called clostridia – what it does is it cranks up an organic acid called HPHPA. If you just Google this, Clostridia, HPHPA, or Clostridia, schizophrenia, you can read about it yourself. But basically, all these cases that we're seeing of shootings and suicides and homicides and things where we just think people are, people are crazy and everybody's blaming the guns, we should be blaming the guts because – uh, what happens is if you have a clostridia bacterial overgrowth, I've seen this in many cases, people that were on the verge of being hospitalized for their mental illness, they came to me, then we were able to fix the gut and fix their brain. This clostridia bacterial overgrowth, C. diff being a common one that you see in healthcare facilities, causes diarrhea, gets passed between people in nursing homes. Clostridia cranks up this HPHPA. What then happens is it messes up an enzyme called dopamine beta hydroxylase. You don't need to remember that, but just know that what happens is gut bug creates inflammation, gut bug causes dopamine to build up. Now you've got too much dopamine in the brain and guess what happens? You're manic, you're road raging, you're speeding and weaving, you're seeking out risk, you're wanting to go skydiving and take all these extra risks where other people are fine sitting at home reading a book, you're somebody who you've got to be in the fast lane always. You've got to be doing 100 miles an hour everywhere you go. That's that's in excess of too much dopamine. So these neurotransmitters, when we're talking depression, mental health, they're a Goldilocks zone. You don't want too little depression because that's when you have a lack of energy, a lack of focus, a lack of drive. That could be also associated with depression. But if you go too much and you've got too much dopamine, that's aggression, that's rage, that's irritability, that's physically abusing people, that's verbally abusing people, that's just feeling on edge. Like you, you want to just fight everyone. You know, I've had people who are like, Evan, if I'm out in public and somebody cuts me in line at the grocery store, I want to punch them in the face. Guess what? We check their lab results. Guess what? Their HPHPA is through the roof. We treat the clostridia infection. It goes back down. And then the wife emails me and the wife says, what did you do to my husband? I'm like, what's wrong? And she's like, you changed this man. This man was a, a raging person. He'd come home from work so angry. Now he comes home and he hugs me and kisses me and he wants to help out and even do the dishes. It's like, oh my God. And I get goosebumps saying that because it's like, look, these are the things that you're not getting taught from your conventional doctor and even your gastroenterologist or your psychologist or your psychiatrist. They don't have a clue. What are they going to do? They're going to give you antidepressants and your deficiency of pharmaceutical drugs is not is not what's going on. It's not a deficiency of Prozac. It's not a deficiency of Zoloft, why you're depressed. It's typically an underlying issue mainly in the gut. Now, I'm being a little bit uh, narrow-minded because there's other issues too that can go on with hormones and the thyroid and the adrenal glands and the liver. If you've got a buildup of toxins in the liver, that can also cause aggression and depression. But just for this sake of conversation, the gut is a huge 
piece of this puzzle of mental health. So if you are struggling, make sure you investigate that. Awesome, man. That was uh, some really, really great information. Um, now, one thing I think might be a limiting factor or could scare people, and maybe they shouldn't do it themselves, but lab work, testing, what to test, how to get it done. Uh, what What is your recommendation there? Yeah, so it's always good to have a functional medicine practitioner on your team. I actually, I just posted a, a little conversation I had in a Facebook group. It was like a health Facebook group I'm part of. I try to answer questions just for free and help people out. And this guy said, hey, can I just go order all these lab testing and do this myself? And my answer was, not really because this stuff can get complicated and there's a certain order of operations to all this. So let me give you an example. Probiotics. Probiotics are good, right? Everybody should take a probiotic. Not necessarily. If you have a bacterial infection and you go and take probiotics, you can actually feed the fire. And this is why some people say they take probiotics and they get bloated or they take probiotics and they get gut pain or they drink kombucha or they do some other fermented goodie and all of a sudden their symptoms get worse. Probiotics aren't always good for everyone at the same time. Sometimes you've got to come in and you've got to clear out the bacteria that don't belong first. Then you do probiotics in phase two after the gut's been cleared out and everything's been recalibrated back to baseline. So if you try to just order labs and you heard Evan say that olive leaf is good and oregano is good and then you just try to start doing this yourself, if you do things in the wrong order, it's not to say you're going to destroy yourself, but you may spend more money and more time versus if you hired somebody to walk you through this. For example, I mean, think of Mount Everest. My buddy Justin always uses this, so I'm stealing this from you, Justin, if you're listening. Um, he says, he goes, Evan, would you want to go hike Mount Everest by yourself <laughs> or would you rather take a Sherpa or a guide who's been up Mount Everest a thousand times? What would you rather do? And I was like, well, duh, I'm going to go with the guide so I don't die on the mountain. And that's the same thing. And, and, and you're not going to die if you take olive leaf and oregano. No, I'm just saying for the best benefit, you want to do things in a certain order. And that order can change based on your case. So if you just have yeast and you don't have bacterial infection, you may be able to go straight to probiotics. If you do have bacteria and yeast and parasites, you might not be able to do probiotics right away. So it's these little nuances and it's these little details that makes the difference between a clinical success story and somebody who said, oh, I tried natural medicine and it sucked. Or I went to a naturopath and they couldn't help me. So this is why I say get someone on your team, preferably someone who's creating content now, this is not to toot my own horn, but I'm putting out hundreds of hours of free content for people to dive in. So get a feel for who you're speaking with first. Make sure they know what they're doing and what they're talking about. Make sure you like the person first before you sign up and start spending a bunch of money. I can't tell you how many people have come to me after they've been to another practitioner and they're like, hey, I went to this naturopath and then they prescribed me antibiotics. And it's like, how are they a naturopath if they're prescribing antibiotics? It's like, that doesn't make sense. So learn and study and research your avenue before you dive in. And that's the beauty of the internet that most of the time people like you and I, we are creating content so you can stalk us and learn more about us than our family members know, just based on the content we create and, and the stuff that we reveal in our content. So, and I'm, I'm in complete agreement there. It's, I mean, trying to fix some sort of uh, health issue you have with Google alone, uh, sounds very, uh, intimidating and, lonely to be honest you know like you have all the you'll find i don't know what 7.6 million results in uh 0.3 seconds uh, if you type in like how do i fix candida you know and it's just like uh well i don't know like which one of these should i act on first or should i do them all at the same time you know uh yeah i think i think definitely having some sort of practitioner uh could, could be helpful is there anything that you do recommend um maybe people getting done once a year like a with a, a professional like a blood panel or something like that like say say they're healthy you know just yeah no real issues maybe you've worked with them in the past and they you fixed a problem and now they're kind of moved on or whatever but they want to keep keep up with you and just check out their health is there something that you you have them do for sure. So I call it like a functional medicine checkup, which is far more comprehensive than what you get at a conventional doctor. Now, just being said, I'm not a doctor. You know, I'm a functional medicine practitioner, so I'm not like prescribing drugs or anything. I'm creating protocols that involve nutrients, mainly herbs, vitamins, minerals, et cetera, whatever we need to do to fix the issues. Now, uh, I do run blood work. 
it's much more comprehensive than your standard blood work. So I write up a requisition form and then just send people to a local lab. So uh, whether it's California or Florida, whatever, I just write up a form. doesn't matter where the client is. They go get their blood draw. So we'll look into things like thyroid markers and we'll look at vitamin B12 in the blood and we'll look at inflammation markers. We'll look at blood sugar, stuff like that. But really the foundations that I'm running every year on myself, and I just got my stool test back. I showed up with a parasite, believe it or not, called Cyclospora, so now I'm treating that. I probably got it from blueberries. This time of the year, blueberries aren't in season, so I'm buying blueberries uh, at Whole Foods, and they come from Peru. So as I mentioned, the international food supply can get you sick sometimes. I'm guessing that's where I picked up that bug. I knew it because I had a bout of loose stool, and I thought, what the heck? And I knew the diet was dialed in. I'm like, where did this come from? So I ran the test and, and there's the bug. So I do that once a year. I run a stool test on myself. It's called a GI map. This is like a map of the world, a GI map. It's the most comprehensive stool test. It's the best one on the market currently. Conventional doctors and gastro docs don't have a clue about it. It, it uses something called DNA PCR based testing, which in terms of sensitivity is about a thousand times better than what you're gonna get from a conventional doc. So if you go to your doc, say, hey, run a stool test, it's crap. You're gonna have a very high false negative rate, meaning the infections are there, but that test is too weak to find them. So I run the GI map once a year, and then I run an organic acids, which is a urine test. I run that once a year, both of those on myself. And then if there's other problems, like if there's a lot of headaches or some other weird symptoms, and I think, hey, is this heavy metals like mercury or a lead problem, or are there other chemicals? There's a test I run that can look for gasoline additives and a bunch of other chemicals. That's what actually convinced me to buy a Tesla is I ran my uh, my urine sample because I was having some headaches and some nausea. And it turns out that there's a gasoline additive that we added to gas after we took out lead. So everybody's like, yay, gas is unleaded. But we added something called methyl benzene to it, which is just as bad, if not worse. And every time you pump in gas, when you're at the gas station, you're breathing that in. And my levels were off the charts. I was like an autistic kid's level. Like autistic children, they typically have detoxification problems. So their uh, gasoline additives and many other environmental toxins are off the charts. That was me. My level was through the roof, and I thought, oh, my God. I had a lawn care business as a teenager. I was spilling gas on my hand, and, of course, the gas just dissolves into your skin immediately, and this stuff can make you sick over time. And I was like, okay, that's it. I'm never pumping gas again. And, uh, and, and then the cool thing is, too, with these labs, if everything checks out, you've got peace of mind, and to me that's priceless. And so people may say, oh – I don't want to spend the 500 bucks or, oh, I don't want to spend the thousand bucks a year that it costs. But it's like, hey, look, if you could prevent yourself, let's take the case of diabetes, for example. If you wait till you've got type 2 diabetes, which is completely preventable and reversible, if you end up type 2 diabetic, guess what? You're spending a thousand bucks a month on medication. What if you were to run a lab work once a year to make sure your hemoglobin A1C, which is your long-term blood sugar, what if you were to just pay the 50 bucks to get that checked out and you would you were to see, hey, this is not a functional number anymore. I'm getting up into the bad level. I, I'm pushing the border. I'm, I'm about to be into a problematic state. I'm going to make sure I really dial in the diet, make sure I'm taking some nutrients to stabilize blood sugar. Maybe you spend 500 bucks on testing and supplements, but guess what? You've just reversed it, and now you don't have to spend 1000 bucks a month on pharmaceuticals. Yeah, that's pay now or pay later, right? You know, that's, that's a, a big thing in the – the health space, just even with uh, people complaining about you know, buying healthier foods, it costing a little bit more or whatever. And, and it's just like, I mean, do you do you really want to go lower quality, you know, at the expense of your health? Is that is saving that much money or really that little money in the grand scheme of things worth it? it yeah, right. Like, like, let's take strawberries, for example. You could get organic strawberries. You could get a pound for maybe like four bucks versus organic strawberries, maybe five or six bucks. And people are like, oh, organic, at least here in Kentucky, people are like, oh, organic, the country boys, they like try to talk down about it. It's like, look, if something is not marked organic, you can look up the list. Folks listening can look up the dirty dozen. These are the highest contaminated foods, strawberries being number one. The average strawberry that's not organic contains 22 different chemicals, pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, glyphosate, Roundup, being your number one most commonly sprayed product, glyphosate kills beneficial bacteria in your gut. Parts per billion, this is PPB, parts per billion of glyphosate kills beneficial bacteria in the gut. So here you are, 
oh, you're taking probiotics, but you're not eating organic. It's like, dude, all that glyphosate you're consuming in your non-organic sweet potato, which average sweet potato contains 13 different chemicals and pesticides, you're, you're reversing the thing. You might as well not even spend your money on probiotics. Spend your money, go organic first, get all the toxins out of the diet. Then you're going to have much, much better success and you're not going to be destroying yourself. And glyphosate, I mean, we could do a whole show together on glyphosate and, and how that damages the gut barrier and, and affects mental health and, and the correlation between autism and elevated levels of glyphosate in, in the body. Go organic, please. If you're not 100% organic, make that your goal. Now, if you go out to restaurants, of course, you probably can't have everything certified organic, but at least in your home, and if you're listening to this podcast, that means you're smart, and if you're smart, then that means you're probably cooking at home a lot because you know the food quality is gonna be much higher. So when you're making food at home, make it your goal. I'm gonna go as close as I can to 100% organic. If it's an extra buck, but you're not damaging your mitochondria, you're not damaging your gut, that's huge. Spend the extra buck. Please, please, please do us all the favor because, you know, eventually, hopefully we'll get to the point to, in, in the United States where we're currently uh, we're currently putting millions of pounds of pesticides into our soil, which is contaminating our groundwater. You see the issue there. If we could just get rid of glyphosate completely and go back to the way it was before glyphosate was invented, your grandparents who hopefully maybe are still alive – that you could share this information. They lived in a time where glyphosate didn't exist. Everything was organic. Everything was local. Everything was grass fed because there weren't factory farms and there weren't pesticides and things. So I love speaking with my grandpa. He's my best friend. And my grandfather tells me the stories of the late 1940s, the early 1950s of living on his grandmother's farm. Everything was local. That chicken came from the backyard and grandma popped the chicken's head off 10 minutes ago. You talk about fresh pastured chicken. You didn't need a special label at Whole Foods to let you know that was good quality. It came from 10 feet away in the backyard. So I'm not saying that you have to completely overthink this. It's just, it's simple. At the end of the day, this is simple. We're just trying to go back to what we did just a hundred years ago before we messed everything up. If only, right? Yeah, and that's, <laughs> I wish we could, man. That's that's something I think um, my grandparents and, and around that generation, they have the hardest time understanding some of the things that I talk about because, you know, they, I don't know, they just, they didn't keep up with it. They don't realize that, you know, do you, do you know where that milk came from that you're drinking or that steak came from that you're eating? You know, and it's, those are like harder conversations to have with them. But yeah, it was uh, a different time back then and a, a more desirable one. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm jealous. I mean, I'm sure there was some bad things about it, but man, I tell you, just listening to Buddy Holly and the crickets and listening to 50s music with my grandpa, it's like, oh man, I was born in the wrong generation. <laughs> I mean, how about some uh, lifestyle parameters uh, you normally give people? I'm sure that you, you discuss that quite a bit, maybe having to do with sleep, fitness, stress. Uh, what, what kind of uh, parameters do you give there? Sure. I know I like did a little mini rant earlier and listed a bunch of things off, like getting negative people out of your life, which I think is huge. You know, ending bad relationships, trying to reduce your obligations. If you're an entrepreneur, you can try to wear many hats. But uh, and this is something I faced just this ownership where I want to be in control of all the different logistics. But at a certain point, you've got to delegate. So you're going to drive yourself crazy. So if you're a stay at home mom or you're an entrepreneur, doesn't matter. Same thing applies. You, you've only got so much bandwidth. So if somebody else can be doing that job for you and you're able to, delegate that task. Get the stuff off your plate and stop doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. And in terms of other lifestyle stuff, I mean, really, I try to get outside every day. I've got plenty of land to explore. But even if you don't have land to explore, you could still go and find a park. I mean, there's something a crazy statistic like 80% of people in the U.S. are within an hour's drive of a forest. So there's a website called Find My Forest. I think it's sponsored by the government and they like the U.S. parks and such. And they'll show you, hey, look, here's some cool green spaces you should be at. It's funny because I'll talk with people in Florida. They'll live like 10 minutes from the beach. And I'm like, how often do you go to the beach? And it's like, I haven't been to the beach in six months. It's like, your address is a seven minute walk from the beach. Are you crazy? What are you doing? <laughs> so you know, I think it's just these little simple things and just trying to take a midday break. You know, for me, I'm typically so booked up that I'm, I'm back to back to back with clients. And my wife gets on me about this all the time. She's like, babe, it's two o'clock and you haven't eaten lunch yet. What are you doing? I'm like, oh, crap, I need to take my own uh, 
I need to take my own advice, which is don't skip meals and make sure you, you, you make time out for lunch, which sounds simple, but when you're just going, 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 sometimes it's two o'clock and it's like, oh my God, I haven't eaten. So just making sure that you've got enough time built in enough. I call it buffer enough buffer built in. So in the morning, if you say you're too busy for breakfast, are you sure? Can you not just find an extra five minutes just to throw together some pastured sausage, maybe a handful of blueberries, maybe a handful of macadamias, pecans, walnuts, like surely you've got time to just get that down. Or are you sure you don't have enough time to go for a walk? What about, what about in the evening when you're just like scrolling on Instagram? What if you could have just gone for a quick walk down the street? Like it's the simple things that give the, the biggest benefit. And I think people know what to do but they need somebody like me to just call them out on it. And they're like, oh, crap, you know what? I need to stop scrolling. I'm mm-hmm. going to get off my phone. I'm going to get outside and just go for a walk. And you're going to feel better. And and it's free. Put it to you that way. It's free. That's what, uh, I mean, any sort of uh, professional coach, anything, you know, that's sometimes our only job. I, you know, as a, as a strength and conditioning coach, that's sometimes all I do is like, I part of our my, a call with an athlete could simply be, what are you doing? Should you be doing that? What should you be doing? <laughs> and then it's just like, yeah, I, I really don't have to do anything. They know the answers. They just need someone there to, to hold them accountable. Which is fine. I mean, if, if you and I are, the, are their uh, virtual accountability partners for today, sweet. I don't care what it takes to get you moving. You just, you got to get moving. You got to get that bright light exposure in the morning because if you have your blinds closed and you're not getting that bright light, cortisol, which is a stress hormone that is not always bad. You need to have enough cortisol in the morning. That's like charging your iPhone in the morning. Cortisol is a light driven hormone. So you've got to make sure you get that bright light exposure in your eyes. Think about your ancestors. There wasn't a such thing as blackout blinds. So I use blackout blinds, but after I wake up, I'm up and you better believe the first thing we do is open those blinds so we can get that uh, that bright light exposure in, which basically tells your brain, hey, look, it's time to wake up and charge those batteries. But if you're somebody who you're just like living in a dark cave and you uh, put on your sunglasses before you even walk outside, it's like, look, you're not even telling, you're, there's an, the optic nerve creates a signal to the brain that says, hey, it's daytime. If you're constantly wearing sunglasses or living in darkness, you're never getting that signal. So no wonder you're tired. I mean, so it's just simple stuff like that that can really make the difference. Or, or let's say you're in an office building and you don't have any windows or you're in a cubicle which I've been in office settings before every day at lunch. If I were in that setting, I would be going outside, listening to your podcast and taking a 10 minute walk in the sunshine done. You're going to be 10% better. Love it, man. All right, let's get to the quick fire questions of the show. Uh, so I'll ask quick questions, quick answers, elaborate if you need to. Uh, but what's the hardest workout you've ever done? Oh God. I don't even know if I want to think about that. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like I've, I don't know if I've ever officially vomited from an, from an exercise. I think I got really, really close once and it was probably a, it was probably an interval training exercise. You know, the, the bodybuilding stuff that I used to do a lot of, I was always fine with that, but it was the intervals. Like when you would have guys, you know, telling you to do like two or three supersets in a row, that was probably the stuff that made me sick. But, uh, luckily I'm much more relaxed with my approach to fitness now so i don't ever get to that point (laughs) awesome man all right in your opinion what's the best activity for building mental toughness Mm. oh god this could be an hour uh i would say hiking i mean hiking is really cool because you're getting to use your 3d spatial navigation in your brain like people depend on gps so much that they would get lost in their backyard it's like you don't, you're not using those parts of the brain anymore that our ancestors would have depended on to find certain routes and certain trails and, you know, cutting your way back to that waterfall. And, Oh, where was that? Where was that big tree again? Like I love the 3d spatial navigation stuff of being in the woods. So I I would say hiking is just my favorite. It's, it's a relaxing way, but it's a good way to build that, that mental clarity and and to be able to kind of, um, I guess, ground yourself and and not get so caught up in the tech, the technological world. All right, if you could only have one piece of equipment or only one form of exercise uh, to train with or by, what would you pick if you could only do it for the rest of your, one thing for the rest of your life? I feel like the smart answer would be kettlebells, but I just don't enjoy kettlebells as much as dumbbells. I mean, I, I got trained as like a, a kettlebell certified, whatever. I went through some some cool training when I was down in Texas for that, but I like dumbbells better. So I would right. do I would do 
I would do dumbbells, man. I would probably do, and I know this depends on your strength and all that, but I would probably do something like maybe a 25 to 35 pound dumbbell set if I could only choose that because you could do so much. I mean, you could have, you could sit on a stump and you could do some, some seated shoulder press. I mean, you could, you could put your hand on the stump and do, you know, do some rowing with your dumbbells. I mean, you could do some, you could do some trap exercises with dumbbells. I mean, you could do squats. You could hold one dumbbell and squat with it. You could do some tricep extensions with the dumbbells. So, I mean, I feel like it's a great functional tool. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, I love dumbbells. Love kettlebells. Uh, both great. All right, man. The question of the show, what is the best advice you have for becoming a better human? And this is 100% open-ended. I got to go with the golden rule, which is treat others how you want to be treated. I mean, I saw this when I lived in Austin, Texas. It was this this energy that's 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 taking over the population, especially concerning for people that are under 35 years old, and that's me, is this – it's just this entitlement problem. People, because of the internet, people growing up with the internet, have the internet for so long, people are entitled to everything. People think that they should get everything for nothing and everything should be free and money's evil and, and, and all these weird thoughts that are coming out of the, the younger and younger generations. And, you know, I'm finding that, and this is from a clinical perspective too, the hardest clients to work with are the youngest clients. And it's because they've already got something set in their head of the way things that the way things should be done. So if it's like, Hey, no, 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 we can't do probiotics yet. Let me, let me take care of these gut bacteria first. It's like, well, this blog said that this probiotic helps reduce inflammation and, and they, they want to challenge everything, which is good. I love this whole challenge authority, you know, rise up and Liberty and whatever, this whole movement of us fighting back against tyranny or whatever. I don't know what the undertone of, of the country is, but, but what I would like to see is that People stay humble and they stay respectful and they simply treat others as they want to be treated because if you're a hateful negative person and you eat organic food, I mean, <laughs> you've, right. you've got some problems. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many people that I came across when I was in Texas and I love you, Texas, but let's just say that I found some bad apples there. You know, you'd have the, the women who they, they look on the outside, they, they've got everything going for them. They've got the yoga pants and the Lululemon. They've got their cool, uh, athletic shoes and their hair's perfect and their makeup and their nails. And they just look so beautiful, but their personality is garbage and they're just a negative, you know, energy vampire. So it's like, look, I don't care how good you look on the outside and how many green juices you drink. If you've got some negative energy, you've got demons inside of you, please work on that stuff because you just spreading negativity and hatred in the world is not going to help anything. And you're not entitled to, to anything. You have to, you have to earn everything and you have to work hard for everything. I mean, I drove a 1992 Honda Accord for a decade and, and, and spent nothing in, in terms of finances so I could save enough money to invest into my health and, and create the life that I have now for my wife and my family. So don't assume that anybody should give you anything. Don't assume that you're, you're good enough for this position or don't assume that, that you're the better candidate than somebody else or, or you're better because of this or your car's better or, or you look better or, you know what I mean? I guess just don't be assuming if you just stay humble and you just realize we're all in this thing together, you're going to have a much, much better life. But anytime that you start playing like the one up game where you're always trying to step on someone else's head to elevate you, you're sabotaging yourself. Maybe in the short term, you stepping on someone else's toes or, or you shoving someone else's head under the water. Remember like in the Titanic movie? And of course it was in real life too, but people, when they were in a panic, they were in a scarcity mindset. They were just trying to survive. Remember how they were shoving people down into the water so that they could get on top and they could try to survive a little bit longer. But then when the boat came back, guess what? Everybody in the water was frozen to death and they were all dead together. So that's the same thing that I believe we're experiencing because there is so much change and, and flux happening with Amazon and technology and the automation of jobs. You know, there's a lot of fear out in, in, in the younger generation, which is fine. I mean, it's totally justified. But at a certain point, you've got to realize, OK, what can I do that's going to be sustainable? And if you're going to just shove somebody down just for a quick one to two year gain, well, what's your five year plan? What's your 10 year plan? What's your 20 year plan? And if you don't have that dialed in, you need to write it down because these are the things that you want to be thinking about now because 
this is just like when we're talking about the functional medicine piece, this whole fight or flight response. If you're stuck, if you're stuck in that sympathetic fight or flight mode, you're running from a bear every day. You're not going to be able to see the tree in front of you that you're going to hit and you're going to knock yourself out because you're so busy looking behind you at the bear that's chasing you. Now, this could be a bad boss, a bad spouse, a bad friend, a bad job that you want to get out of. If you're constantly looking back at that bear that's chasing you, you're not going to see the tree ahead. Guess what? You're going to get knocked out. So so look backwards, but you've got to look forwards too at the same time. And don't get paralyzed by your past. Don't get paralyzed about what's holding you down right now. See where you need to be. See where you want to be and where you envision yourself, and then take the baby steps you've got to get to be there. You're not going to figure this out tomorrow, but you may figure this out in a year or five years or 10 years, but just see the end goal. It's over there. It's across the street. It's in the field I'm looking at. It's right over there. Okay, look, I see a tree here. I see a tree there. If I just navigate, boom, 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 I'm going to get over there and just start using visualization to empower you and and just don't, don't be paralyzed. There's nothing to be paralyzed about. No one's going to come save you. No one's going to do this for you. You're on your own. Of course you can seek out friends. Like now you and I, Jared, we're going to be friends. We're going to keep this conversation going. You're going to come on my podcast. We're going to keep the ball rolling. So, so cool team up and make partnerships. But at the end of the day, when you wake up and it's 7 30 AM and the hustle starts, who's responsible for the, your success or your failure? It's you. So no excuses. Love it, man. Absolutely love it. Now we've talked about a lot of great stuff. Where can people go uh, to learn more about your work, what you do and uh, access your resources? Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, What a rant. I feel like I should like, I don't know be a motivational speaker or something. People have actually asked me to come like speak at colleges and stuff. I just don't like traveling that much. I'm a homebody. Uh, Yeah, just Google my name. Just search Evan Brand, uh, E-V-A-N, last name brand, like brand name, and you'll find me. You'll end up on my site, which is evanbrand.com. You can go study my work. I've got tons of videos where I take hour-long health topics and condense it to a five-minute YouTube video. So check those out. And then I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of podcasts that you can look at. And if you want to reach out and get help, Uh, I've got a team member on staff who she'll chat with you for 15 minutes for free. We'll listen to your health problems, your symptoms, figure out if we can help you. If so, we'll help you. And uh, we do phone and Skype. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're in Australia or Canada or U.S. You know, I can help people anywhere with the with the beauty of the Internet. Awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Jared. always whine about their best.